you please tell me a bedtime story? Okay, I will tell you one story, but then after that, Elizabeth, you've got to go to bed, okay? Okay, so I'm going to tell you the story of the teeny tiny superbug. Once upon a cold, dark day, in a small place called Wuhan, a teeny tiny superbug did hatch a nasty plan. I'll bring pain, fear and sadness and death throughout the land. I'll quickly multiply myself. I need friends close at hand. Under the howling of the wind that cold November night, the teeny tiny bug and friends formed strategies to fight. They first began to land on people's faces, hands and eyes. But we must go much deeper, the superbug realized. These teeny tiny superbugs decided then and there that they'd fly into humans' throats before they were aware. They'd give them fevers, coughs and colds, <laughs> just like the common flu, and slowly take their breath away before they had a clue. As people hugged each other and traveled to many lands, the teeny tiny superbugs did spread from hand to hand. The scientists and doctors cringed cause never had they seen a teeny tiny superbug so ugly and so mean. They sent warnings to all countries. Help us fight this disease. Wear masks. Wash face and hands. Cover your mouth if you should sneeze. They soon enforced all travel bans. No crowds of three or more. No having family visits or friends knocking at your door. All the PMs and presidents had meetings night and day and soon decided lockdown was by far the safest way. Stay home, save lives, don't go outside, was all the people heard. And all the folks did follow their government's every word. But sadly, bugs had spread throughout the world and caused much grief. As people died in thousands, hospitals had no relief. At last, the bugs were happy and partied on a tram and laughed at what would happen to this isolation plan. They sniggered. Dads will drink and fight with moms and kids all day. And kids would cry and scream because they can't go out and play. Instead, they stayed indoors, played games baked cakes and painted shots, played dumb charades, did gardening, and in windows they hung hearts. A thousand million video chats connected people's homes, and soon the old folk and the singles never felt alone. The daddies became sous chefs and helped mummies all day long reciting tales of yore and joined in singing happy songs. The teeny tiny superbugs began to die like flies and soon reports of sickened folk grew very small in size. Pollution at an all-time low, yet flying high was hope. As everyone discovered, they could kill the bugs with soap. Each day, the folks got stronger as the virus toll declined. Until only one teeny tiny bug was left behind. But Grandpa Harry hit him on his head with a hammer. Just how he managed that is yet another tale by Grandma. <laughs>